Hello, hello! And welcome back as I continue my Any Port in a Storm Intergalactic Colonization Policy. In Perfidious Speed plays Stellaris. Construction complete is nice, but I just want to take a moment here. You know what, Galaxy? Just take a moment here and rap a little bit, shall we, baby? I, uh, I know I don't want to come on too strong, Galaxy. I don't want to seem too forward, but I gotta say, if you're looking for a little no-strings-attached fun, a little slap and tickle, I think Perfidious Pete may just be your kind of guy. Yeah, I know I'm not much to look at, and I'm generally pretty unpleasant to be around, but hey, Galaxy, I just gotta say, three things you gotta remember about Perfidious Pete, sugar tits. One... You don't have to call me in the morning. In fact, I'd kind of prefer if you didn't call me in the morning or at any other time. Two, if you got an empty planet, baby, I'm always ready to fling a little of my human seed at it. I will splatter it all over that planet of yours. Because the third thing you got to remember about Perfidious Pete, baby, I have absolutely no standards whatsoever. None. Zero, zip, zilch, nada, the big goose egg. I don't care if you've got the habitability of a toxic barren wasteland or the habitability of a frigid arctic blast. Doesn't matter to old Perfidious Pete. You just say the word and I will be all over you like Bill Cosby after a suspiciously soporific glass of wine. And yeah, you know that last part might have made it more than a little creepy, but that's okay, because come last call, girl, when you're sitting here all alone in the uh, intergalactic void and going home alone is the last thing you want to do, you just keep old Perfidious Pete in mind, baby. Because trust me, after one encounter with the Pete, going home alone will be out of the cellar on your list of last things you want to do for the rest of your life. I'll make it seem like the best decision you never made. <laughs> uh, that last part was probably not a ringing endorsement. Definitely probably not going to get me to splatter the galaxy with my seed, but hey, like that soporific glass of Cosby-infused wine, it's not like the galaxy's really been able to stop us so far. I, okay, I'm a little worried about the Cubraxi hive. They've got some legal power up there. The justice system may be closing in on the splatterific policies of the Petarian Empire, but until they do, until they do, nothing's going to stop us now. Just like a uh, Journey song? Was that Journey? We'll still have each other. Nothing's going to stop us now. Or was that Speedwagon? That might have been Speedwagon. What is it with bands from like the early 80s, that kind of soft rock sort of, I want to say hair band, but not really a hair band. They were like the precursor to the hair band. You got like your Journey, your Foreigner, your Ario Speedwagon, your Air Supply, those kind of guys. Yeah, wow. How come all of them sound exactly the same? If you played, if you if you went to a stranger and played like a Speedwagon song, a Journey song, a Foreigner song, a song by Boston, a song by Chicago, and said, how many bands is this? I guarantee you they could not properly identify the number of different artists singing those songs. They'd be like, what, it's like two different bands? That one guy's voice is a little bit higher, so I think, I think this is like two? That's like two bands. You'd be like, nope, it's six, baby. It's six. They just all sound the same. So, wormhole generator is built out here. That means there's nothing else for the Goib new to do. I'm going to stop talking about journey and air supply. I think we'll bring you back then and just have you uh, start building mining and research stations. Are we going to be... Oh, we're out of minerals. All right, as long as you're busy, that's fine. And, hey, we've expanded our borders, which means... We should probably visit these systems and see which, if any of them, have habitable worlds. You know what? Here, first strike force. This is this is going to be your. You're not a distraction, but also, you are the also boldly goes. The previous boldly goes has already been reassigned, but you also boldly go. There you go. So why don't you also boldly go where no man has also boldly gone before? Come out here and see if there's any habitable worlds out here. We're just going to have you bounce around, ping pong about the galaxy, if you will. I'd love to find, like, maybe a mega structure or something, just as a point of interest, something to look into. Plus, we've got another arm of the spiral that if we get trapped in by the Eruxos, and I do kind of want to try to go around, if possible, the 
Ruxin Empire and see if we can't maybe, just maybe, envelop them? An envelopment strategy is tactically sound advice, and I wouldn't mind trying to envelop them in our colonization before we destroy them, but we are also getting a pretty respectable fleet constructed. Why are we losing so many minerals? Consumer goods are taking... So, consumer goods are a thing I don't really understand. Is there a place where we can see our consumer goods or get some information about that? Policies and edicts, factions... I mean, it's not... Are they, are they a strategic resource? They are not a strategic resource. So, how do we see more about consumer goods? Because I'm not really sure how those work specifically, but they are taking up a lot of our minerals. Like a surprisingly suspicious amount of minerals. How do we reduce that? Consumer goods are taking up 80. I, I guess that's something we need to maintain happiness for our empire. Hey, a new faction has been founded. A new faction has been recently gaining traction in the internal political landscape of the Petarian Empire led by Governor Imani Gorbani, who has the most rhyming name of all time. It's no wonder she won an election. I mean, she didn't get elected, she got appointed, but it's no wonder I appointed her with a name like Imani Gorbani. That just rolls off the tongue. Uh, Imperial Governor Imani Gorbani will address the people of the Petarian Empire today. Just, you'd be like, yeah, I'll tune into that. I'm curious about what her policy is with regard to consumer goods and why they're chewing up so much of our infrastructure. They call themselves the Democratic Rights Center. Their members work for equality and justice for all denizens of our empire. This is the worst faction of all time. They are going to despise us. Yeah, we're going to need to do something with you. Uh, manage this faction. Raise the policies, values of the Petarian Empire supremacy block, bringing them to our government. This will permanently change our governing ethics, displease all other factions in our empire, or we can suppress this faction. What does this cost us? Faction happiness minus 20%. Xenophobia suppressed modifier, adding into following effects. Xenophobia ethics attraction minus 50, and they lose one. Inf we're going to lose one influence per month, though. There's got to be another way to deal with this faction. They have five people. Really? What if we just fire Ibanez or kill her? If she can't lead this faction, do they still exist? Because I don't care about this governor. I'll kill her. You know what? Let's let's try that. Iban okay, let's let's take a look at Ibanez here. I would rather pay 50 influence to fire this chick than a whole bunch of influence to suppress this faction forever. Because it doesn't say how long this lasts. Now, you know what? And I don't want to suppress those guys anyway. They're great. Oh, I was looking at the wrong fact. I almost suppressed the people who love us, which would have been quite foolish because the Petarian Empire Supremacy Block adores us. It's these jerk asses who we don't like. Promote faction. Any like-minded factions make their ethics more attractive for the population as long as it's active. That makes them doubly effective. Or we could suppress this faction... You know what? Yeah, just go. I'm suppressing you. I don't care about your happiness. There are no democratic rights faction here. This is the Petarian Empire. You do not have... This is not a fucking democracy. That's not how this works. You don't get a vote. You don't get anything nice, really. You do what you're told and you keep your mouth shut. Yeah, their happiness is 0% because they are suppressed. Anomaly. You know, we could pay a little additional influence to try and bring up one of the other... Factions that love us desperately and want to have our babies. Or rather want to see us splatter our babies to the rest of the Empire. Let's let's look into the, like the Banner of Triumph. These guys seem to like us a lot. Banner of Triumph. They like aggressive diplomacy. Unrestricted warfare displeased the Banner of Triumph. Okay. Oh, failing to allow for unrestricted warfare. What do they like about us? Uh, okay. So, conquering alien planets or making other empires are subject to war will please them for a time. They love it when we expand our borders. They like it that we have a rival. They like that we're imperial hegemony, neighborhood rivalries. Positioning ourselves as the rival of at least two neighboring empires will please the banner of triumph. Strong alone. Joining a federation will make them angry. No chance there. Leviathan Slayer. Destroying a space dwelling Leviathan will please the banner of triumph as well. About the hierarchical union. We have everything for them except for a harmonious empire. And we're never going to have harmonious empire. Also, these guys love us too, just not quite as much. 
No immigration. Asserting dominance. We could uh, please them. Giant massacre. Putting any of the gargantuan Leviathan Xenos out of their misery will please the Petarian Empire Supremacy Block for a time. The Petarian Empire Supremacy Block has a lot of people. We should promote them. We have no drawbacks here. Everything we're doing, they love. And all of these things are things that we love, too. Unrestricted native influence, core world exclusivity, traditional domination. We're not going to change any of those things. You know what? Do I want to pay to promote the faction? What does embracing a faction do? Does not have fanatics. Oh, we can't embrace them because they are fanatic. What? Can we embrace any of these factions? We can't embrace any of these factions. What's promote faction? That means, okay, so we're trying to get more people to support it. Gotcha. Okay. Now, I guess we'll just stick with suppressing the one faction and the other ones. I, I guess we just kind of let them roll. The Petarian Empire Supremacy Block is by far the widest supported faction. They've got the support of the government. Specifically, they have my direct support in that I've said, I will give you goods and services in order to do what you're told. And they've got the money. They've got the super PACs. Perfidious Pete is on their side. I'm not going to pass legislation that prevents them from doing the things I love them to do. I'm going to let you get away with murder is effectively what I'm saying. As long as you condone me committing rampant and unrepentant murder. Any of these planets worth colonizing? Even as like a sector? The question is, what would we do if we started planet colonization out here? We would have to basically make this its own sector. How good are these planets then becomes the question. I think before we colonize just randomly, although I wouldn't mind doing that just to cut these jerk asses off and end any potential colonization hopes they might have. We should get a team out here to start surveying the area. If we're better off building a frontier outpost, I think we should just build frontier outposts instead. We are surveying systems. Okay, the HMS Wu is now idle. So, Wu, did you survey all this shit? There's no... Oh, we have another science ship, though. Yeah, okay. The HMS Torch is over there handling that. All right, Wu, um, why don't you come out here? Who are you? Oh, the also boldly goes. Right, you're looking for threats, though, also boldly goes, not surveying. So, let's go survey, survey, and we'll have Wu just keeping busy. Also... Shang Wu is, she's got that mystic magic that's that thing. I don't know what it is, but I, like uh, people from Eastern cultures tend to, they don't age. Got like your Jackie Chan, the guy's like 9 million, but he looks like he's 50 and has looked like he's 50 for the last 40 years. And he will look like he's 50 until he dies. They all have that like Dick Clark kind of magic happening. And Shang Wu, it's, it's unbelievable, man. That she, She's out of here. On the HIMS as Wu, and she has been for an eternity. She's 85 years young. She has no chance to die either because she won't croak until she's 97. She's got at least another 12 years of science under God. Okay, Wu. I'm telling you, she's got that mystic side of Madame Gal, I am eternal kind of thing. Look out, Daredevil. Madam Gal works for the Petarian Empire. Look out at crunchy eruptions down here because we got Madam Gal on our side. We also have a whole buttload of unspent minerals. So let's spend them. Give me more destroyers. I want to get up to my force limit. Petersburg, what are you doing? Eh, build a destroyer. St. Peter's, what are you doing? Build a destroyer. This is good. Keep building destroyers. Also, something we need to do. Well, I just blew all my minerals. Never mind. I was going to say something we need to do is run through our planets very quickly. Just make sure everything is in order on a planetary scale. Let's go ahead and get one more month of minerals. Let those destroyers cook up. We are making huge energy gains now. Single badly scorched module is all that's left of a Cybrex research station that once orbited Zarum 4A. Hundreds of thousands of years ago, the vacuum exposed inside of the module is filled with dead remains of the creatures that are part machine and part organic. Situation update. We found a Cybrex research station. What do we need to do this? Scientist has a five skill or higher. So this is the most difficult Cybrex mission. This is the one that takes a five skill person. Track it on the map. Where is it? Seriously though, where is it? Over here. Can we reach it? We can. Shang Wu, you got 12 years to get this done and I can't risk having you die before we do it. Come over here and do this research. Come, come research this. Research that project in the system. And as soon as you're done with that, We'll bring you back over here to continue your scouting. 
I think there's only one Cybrex research project that takes a level five scientist, and I'm pretty sure this is the one. I'm going to take a look at uh, the eruptions again very quickly. They really hate us. It still says they are equivalent in strength to us in every capacity. Equivalent in strength and technology. But as far as I can tell, they just have the four worlds here. Earth finished. Okay. So we got a lot of construction complete. Let's run through our planets very quickly. I want to take just a quick moment. Make sure everything is still looking good on all of the planets that we have under our direct control. We're sectors. You know what? We've sort of written them off. We're letting them take care of themselves. Sometimes sisters got to do it for themselves. And in this case, sisters got to do it for themselves. This planet, Los Pedalus, is going to be an energy powerhouse when we're done with it. An absolute powerhouse of energy. But for now... There's nothing that needs to be done here. <sighs> El Pizzo, you're the ugly younger sister we never really wanted to bone, but since your older sister gunned us down brutally and made us look like a fool in all front of all of our friends at that party, we took you home. Sort of as a method of revenge, I'm not going to lie, and honestly, I'm regretting my decision. I know I said any port in a storm, and I meant it, especially when it means saving face in front of all my companions, but I'm not going to feel good about it in the morning. Hydroponics farm for you. Do you have a Cathanon monument? You do not. Let's clear this tile then. And once that tile is clear, we will put a Cathanon monument on there, even though that's going to cost us a little bit of cash. How are things up here? Well, we're going to upgrade this. We're going to upgrade that. And we're going to upgrade that. I always like to do upgrades wherever upgrades are available. Do you have a Cathanon monument on this planet? It does not appear that we do. Oh, no, wait, never mind. We do have one. Okay, excellent. We're working on Unity. So what would be next on the menu for this planet? Nothing. Peterson City is good. Also a fantastic planet. Those guys are great. San Pitego is a shitty desert world. Right. What do we want to do with you? I still really want to colonize up here where there's this tropical world. Wait, was that the system? Yeah, that's this one. We were going to take this 16 tropical world and try and terraform that alpine world eventually. And then drop that into a sector and we were going to kick this dump out of the planet or out of the core world system and make it into part of District 13, I think was the overall plan. Do we need to do anything to San Pitego for now? Um, Why are you on? Oh, you're probably one member of the suppressed population, so you're a little unhappy. Well, there's nothing I can do about that. I'm sorry, your ethics are all wrong. Join the winning team and you won't have to be brutally oppressed by our draconian regime. If you just be like, well, the regime's draconian, but what are you going to do? Can't fight City Hall, Pete. That's Those are the words that I want to hear come out of your mouth. Tell me that you can't fight City Hall. Also, let's just let the next month tick through here while we keep running through this. I kind of want to keep getting minerals input so that we can... Maintain our building structure. Anything we really want to do here? No? I think we're good. Although, I will... You know what? Here, build a mine. Take a basic mine. Pizzenville. You're good for the foreseeable future, though. I mean, we never really need to do anything here. You're unhappy. Of course you're unhappy. You grew up on the Kravadox world, and we're kicking you out of the Empire soon, eventually. That's what it was. They got wind of the fact that we're about to banish them from the Empire. You're all pissed off, too. You know what? If you're going to be all pissed off, I could just enslave you. How about that? You want to just be a slave instead? How do you like them apples? Yeah, you can be angry all you want now. Now you're a slave. Should have kept your mouth shut, huh? You know what? Maybe we just do that to everybody who's angry. If you're an angry member of a faction, screw it. I'm just going to enslave you. Talk about managing factions. This is the better way to do it. Find the people. Find the objectors. Clap them in irons and throw them in jail. So you're an ejector, right? Yeah, you're not happy. Oh, well, guess what? I'm going to slap you into servitude, and this loyal citizen goes from farmer to scientist. Look at that. Problem solved. Man, managing this faction is easy. Factions, not a problem when slavery abounds. Just make somebody a slave. So, who on this planet's unhappy? Oh, look, our scientist. Oh, I don't want to be a scientist anymore. Well, good for you. I guess you're not a scientist anymore now. You are a farmer. Congratulations. 
I don't want to run the planet anymore. It's too much work. Oh, well, too much work, is it? Well, this guy will do it. And he'll do it happily with no objections. So there you go. Wipe your ass back into slavery. How do you feel now, huh? Feeling like maybe you shouldn't have objected to the overlord. Should have been like, ah, man, you know, I always knew that the regime was corrupt, but I never thought they would crack down on us quite this hard. And then what did I do? I had to go and open my trenchant mouth and geez, they cracked down on us like a, a Xbox 360 video game. They cracked down harder than I ever suspected they might possibly crack down. I guess we'll go for engineering facility. I don't, I don't want to demolish anything. I just wanted to upgrade this to an engineering facility. Anything else? Um, you know, no, everything else appears to be pretty good. Some system surveys getting complete. How are our ships looking? Uh, also, boldly go, still thinking about the universe. That's fine. First and second strike force. You guys are on your way to Seoul. Excellent. Exactly as planned. We are over our fleet limit. System survey but as our population expands, it's going to come up to keep pace with our Navy. And I, I'm thinking maybe we just declare war on the Etruscans over here. The Eruptions, Eruskians, whatever, th 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 these bug men. I'm feeling like maybe we should just eat them. Receiving a transmission from the independent space station of the Curator Sigma Enclave, they appear to have successfully translated our language. Well, it's about time. Hi, Curator Gildorn Kerfargeth. First contact with the Curator Sigma Enclave. So different form of curators, huh? Curator Sigma Enclave. Perhaps you're already familiar with the tenets of our ancient order, like the esteemed colleagues in the other Curator Enclaves. We're willing to trade, provided that you can meet our rates. Hey, what's up, bro? Well met. I'm not really in the market at the moment, even though I do have a thousand energy that's going unused. I'm sure I can find something to do with it that doesn't involve giving it to you for useless information about like a star system I don't give a damn about. Or alternatively, I'm saving up to get to 5,000 so that I can buy information on how to beat that dreadnought and... Sorry, I got interrupted by research stations here. But uh, get information on how to defeat that dreadnought and colonize that system I've been wanting to colonize for like the last five episodes now. I'm very strongly considering going to war. Is it better to just leave the eruptions and let them linger and potentially get more powerful and more dangerous? Or is it better to just cut that cancerous tumor out of our empire right now? I mean, it's right in the heart of our potential expansion zone. Do we want to let it linger, or do we just make the hard choice now and perform the surgery? We've got what I feel is like a pretty powerful fleet. Let's let it tick for another couple months. I'd love to know exactly. So they have, oh, I, why can I see this? 1,897. How is that a roughly equivalent fleet to us? That's... Like almost half a week. That's like 50% weaker than our fleet. Complete. If this information is accurate, which I'm highly suspect of, it seems like it's probably not at all accurate, but assuming that information is accurate, we would have almost nothing to fear from a war with those guys. I'm really tempted, like very sorely tempted. What are the drawbacks of going to war? Well, it also decreases our ability to expand the empire. If we're not expanding because we're devoting resources to warfare, I mean, I'm going to go with the controversial opinion that that's kind of bad. Also, you need to upgrade to, let's say, an engineering facility as well. If I'm going to attack these guys, though, I'm going to go a little further over my fleet limit. I'm going to take the mineral hit. Let's let two more months go past, and then... Do we have an Admiral, by the way? Not a distraction? You have you do not have an Admiral. Oh, good. We've had an Admiral who we've been keeping on the fucking payroll for, like, the last 40 years, and the guy has been not even assigned to a fleet or... Well done, Pete. Good job. Uh, excuse me? Where? What do we got here? Um, looking like some space whales. Uh, also boldly goes, though. You are going to get destroyed. Well, okay. I mean, you should definitely be running away at this point. 18 days to run. Uh, they're getting some missiles out. I think we may have just killed a whale, baby. Oh, uh, we are definitely not going to live, though. 
Retreat. Did we do it? We did it. I think we I think we bugged out. They made it. They made it. So good. You guys are awesome. In the meantime, not a distraction. How about uh, the Admiral gets his first taste of uh, alien blood? Wets his chops a little bit before the uh, final confrontation with our little bug friends? It just seems like it would be a quality training exercise for him to come out here and wreck some shit. If we're going to send him out to murder babies, we should probably warm him up, I guess, by letting him murder some babies. Will you another destroyer, please? Anybody idle? Also boldly goes as missing in action. The science ship Arbiter is doing fuck all at the moment. Have you completed all of your surveys? We can't survey here. We can't survey here because there are intergalactic threats. We know there's a fleet over here, but we can do some more surveying. We don't have... I mean, we can't go out there because we don't have open borders, but we could come down this way a little bit. Now, I'd really rather potentially survey the, the closer plant. Actually, can't we just auto-survey? Isn't that a thing? Didn't we turn that on? Arbiter? Automatic... Yeah, you know what? There, there you go. That's, that's your job forevermore. Just go automatically explore something at all times. Distance isn't really a factor for our empire simply because we have wormhole travel and we can go point to point pretty instantaneously. Special project complete. And Shang Wu once again delivering the goods gives us a Cybrex artifact, but more importantly, 150 in. Yeah, yeah, Wu. I tell you, the only thing I really want to woo you is you, Wu. The only thing I want to woo is you. You, you complete me. You fill my heart with joy. You bring love and goodness to all things Petarian. And in fact, you just brought us like the potential to pick up some extra resources here. Oh, those are in District 13. You know what? We should go build those for District 13 and help out our bro. This is going to seem ignominious, Wu, but I think I'm going to put you on auto explore. Oh, we got this abandoned terraforming project. We could... Okay, what does this take? Oh, this takes... Uh, yeah, do that. Resume the process. We'll see what that does. And in the meantime, the reason we resume process is because that was on a plan I didn't really give a shit at all about. Woo, why don't you just go auto-explore? I'm sure you'll think of something. It's fine. I trust you so much, Woo. I'm willing to let you choose your own objectives now. You probably know better than me. I'm going to defer to your expertise. It's like when I get in a cab... And a cab driver or a Uber driver or Lyft or whatever, you know, parlance has sort of change. But they always ask, hey, what route do you want to take? And you know what? I'm not a professional vehicle operator. You do this for a living. You know the traffic patterns, especially when I'm in a city that I'm not from. Like, you know, when I'm in St. Louis, I typically just drive myself. But when I travel or go someplace and they're like, hey, uh, what route do you want to? You know what? I always invariably say I defer to your expertise. You are the professional here. I don't need to tell you how to do your job, sir. Not only do I not need to tell you how to do your job, I don't want to tell you how to do your job. You know better than I do. Trust yourself, man. Believe in yourself. Self-confidence is a big motivator. Why are we suddenly catastrophically losing cash? Module maintenance. Station maintenance, ship maintenance, building maintenance. A lot of maintenance factors coming in. It could be because we're over our fleet limit, so I think maybe we'll stop. If it's going to cost us this much money, hostile fleets are present. Yeah, Space Whales, this one's going to go a little differently, I got a feeling. Seriously, though, could we go, go actually look at this fight? There we go. All right, let's, let's, let's slow things down a little bit. I want my Admiral to get some EXP, and I want my Admiral also to be confident enough in his own abilities that he doesn't ask me what's the best way to prosecute this war. You know what I want you to do? Do whatever you... Go with your heart. So we've got a bunch of, like, quantum torpedoes that should be in the air already. I'm looking for my Alpha Strike from these missiles. It looks like we... Alright, LP Tesco. The aborted terraforming process in LP Tesco has finally been completed after seeding the atmosphere with billions of terraforming nanites. Well, that seems like a fucking terrible idea. What are you going to do to the people that live on that planet? They're going to breathe those in and get that shit in their lungs. Then, 40 years from now, what do we got? We're inundated with lawsuits because we gave a 
billion of the people that live on this planet mesothelioma and they all died. Then we got to make reparations to their family. You guys got to think ahead long term. Sure, terraforming the planet is a great idea, but the liability issues, man. Ugh, the cost of that recall is going to be prohibitive. Alien bioengineering machinery has significantly altered the conditions on the moon's surface. Ecosystem and climate have both stabilized, and a new alien biota adapted to this climate has been introduced. Let us see what we ended up with. Like, it didn't get worse, though, did it? That wasn't... What, what planet was that? It was a shitty one, I remember. It was in... Was it Fort Pete? It might have been Fort Pete. Oh, Planet Summer. Yeah, okay. So Fort Pete turned into what I believe is... Nope, that's not it. It was a shitty world in Alpha Centauri, I thought. Yeah, it was this one. What did you become? Worse. Actually, you got way worse. You became a Tundra world. We should have dismantled that machinery. Yep, that would have been... Uh, much, much better thing to have done. So, lesson learned, important lesson learned, in fact, is that if your climate is good enough, maybe don't screw around with it. All right, physics research. Planet fortification, we could get advanced shields. Man, the cost on those is just prohibitive. Blue lasers, I don't give a shit about. Disruptors, I don't actually care about those at all. Surprisingly expensive as well. Three grand for that. Synchronized defenses. Intriguing and also not terrible. And it would get a purple out of here, which would give us an opportunity to get another purple. Gravitic sensors I still don't care about. You know what? Do synchronized defenses. It's going to only take a meager two years. Hell, it's going to take us another two months to finish off these friggin' space whales. Come on. Get my whales down, though. Anybody taking damage? Doesn't look like... Oh, okay. We're about to lose a cruiser. Did we lose a Corvette? I think we lost one Corvette. Let's look at the fleet stats. We lost uh, nothing, actually. Nope, we managed to hold on to every single one of our... I'm I'm so proud of you, Admiral Malak Bilal. Your first, and admittedly grossly one-sided, combat was remarkably effective. Kinetic damage did almost all of our damage, even though we have quantum missiles. They still did effectively zero. So missiles are just garbage then, I guess is the long and the short of it. They're the shittiest weapons you could ever possibly put on anything. They're just, they're real crummy. Kinetic seemed to be the way to go. Well, I'm glad we had the foresight and courage to change then. So not a distraction. Why don't you come back to Earth and once you're done with that, then maybe repair. Hey, you, know, you know what? Just here, fly back to Earth first. Also, Boldly Goes, you're still bouncing around. Actually, Also, Boldly Goes may be lost in space. Oh, William, we've been out and found the space whales. Whatever will we do now? I think we're going to declare war on the eruptions, Dr. Smith. Hey, where did you guys get a fleet of 1,200 strength? You're going to... Right. Vassals will help us fight. You know what? With the vassals on our side and our fleet and their fleet, I think combined, we've got a respectable chance of taking these guys out. And you're saying, Pete, these guys are disloyal as shit. There is no way they're going to help you in a fight. And you are definitely not wrong. They are absolutely not going to help us in a fight. They will help defend our borders, though. Here, come up here to Canethium and build a bunch of mining stations. They will help defend our borders. Like, if the eruptions come in and invade their space, they will use their fleet to try and defend it. Loyal vassals will actually fight for you. You know, because some people are willing to do their jobs. All I'm saying. Disloyal bastards. But we're going to have to deal with their disloyalty and perfidy. And honestly, I mean, we are the Petarian Empire. Shouldn't we be familiar with perfidy at this point? I think we're all pretty familiar with it. If you want to see that, you know, might consider subscribing, post new episodes of Stellaris every day. If you like this one, consider dropping a like down in the comments section. Support really does mean a lot. Right now, though, I'm going to go look up the definition of perfidy so I can finally, once and for all, figure out what it truly means to be perfidious. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.